This is the Double Doink Dynasty League Podcast with Boyer, Andy, and your host, Tyler. That's impossible. Season's going to end on a double doink. Welcome back to Double Doink Dynasty Podcast presented by your performance enhancing dads, minus Boyer. What's up, Stu? Not much. Did you have a good Christmas? Oh, great Christmas. We uh we got a switch, some other fun stuff. Uh, I got a new buddy uh that's also jumping on. Um, you know, he also showed up for Christmas. So um we're gonna jump into week 16 recap. We're gonna jump into week 17 recap, and we got Mr. Loser of Week 16, Mr. Colin Mattoon. What's happening, my guy? What's happening, guys? I'm I'm here for the roast of Mattoon's overrated squad. Uh, you and I Andy feel both. You, man. I feel you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, fun fact, going into playoffs, uh, me and Andy were both riding a uh, seven-game win streak, so that was nice. Didn't help. Uh, didn't, didn't help us in playoffs, but we'll take that win streak into next year's regular season. We'll start off hot next year. Here's open. <laughs> uh, so, what's going on, Mattoon? You doing all right? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, Mattoon had kids too, so he's, a, to, he's one of them. Guys. I don't even know if there's games being played tomorrow, Thursday. I don't even know what's going on on sa- Saturday or Sunday. We're just shipper bus here. <laughs> uh, Mattoon can be a uh, PED with us as well. So uh, he he put the kids down, got was able to jump in. So that's, that's always nice, man. For sure. For sure. So. All right, so let's jump into uh, last week's recap a little bit. Um, I did make playoffs or make a constellation. I played Colin Kelly. Uh, I lost by three. Kind of disappointing. Thought I had a shot to get to that fifth place game. Couldn't do it. Go work, Kelly. Uh, Burns and Underhill, divisional matchup in consolation. Burns beat Underhill by two points. Both of those matchups in consolation were super close. Um, so it will be Burnsy versus Kelly for the fifth place matchup. Me and Underhill will drop back into that bottom max points four situation. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, Colin Mattoon versus Tyler Boyer. Uh, 50 points versus 76 points. Uh, nice. All four of the consolation teams outscored both of you this week. So be proud. Yes, that. Uh, so neither of them wanted to win this matchup. Boyer decided to pull it out. Good work. Uh, going to Jer Fry versus uh, Stu. I was stoked that Jer Fry could have had the number four overall pick this year, and now they are looking at the number eleven or twelve pick. So that's fun. Um, they put up ninety-eight points this week. They had a week high for the semifinals, uh, and uh, Stu put up eighty less than that. <laughs> So, uh, also, Andy, you would have gotten beat by three of the four Constellation teams. Yeah, I just everybody except for you. Yeah. You're lucky Can I, I just didn't say, the playoffs. I looked at their lineup and I went, who the fuck is Isaiah Hodgins? And then that guy proceeded to score more points than Adams and Hill combined this week. So, props to Jer Fry for playing him. And what the fuck did Devonta Adams and Tyreek Hill do? to make me deserve this i don't appreciate that those were my guys all year and they let me down that's all right uh mattoon what happened what happened to your team man well i I just like to welcome andy i've got a group we meet on thursdays uh you know we can talk it out with us um so uh but yeah similarly to to andy's team i thought i had a shot looking at boyer's lineups kind of seeing where points were going looking like he was going to be somewhere in the 70s or so and that was a hard number and unattainable number. So who would have thought that Diggs would have gotten the two catches he did? Evans luckily had a 20-yarder to finish the game against <laughs> the Cardinals. Otherwise, he would have been stuck at half a point for that lineup. It was brutal. So uh, hey. real quick, since we've got three of us together and it's a dynasty league, uh, where are we out on Mike Evans? He's 29. He's only got three touchdowns this year. Are we hoping Brady leaves and a new quarterback fixes him? What's the deal? I sure hope so. I think that entire Bucks offense is hoping Brady leaves right now. But uh, yeah. 
but not retires because I have Brady. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's a fine line there. So maybe yeah. maybe he goes and buddies up with Sean Payton and the, the all-star coaching squad. So there we go. <laughs> maybe. I think there's a lot of movement that's gonna happen this year, and I think people are gonna be happy about it. It's always fun. Last off season was wild. So was fan- I'm all was for a fantasy it. off season. Sure was. Adams, Hill, Russ, everybody just flopping around. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was- sit, sitting on Evans, man, sitting on Cup. I mean, that's the reason I made the digs move was he's still a little bit younger than both those guys, but I got to make a move. To, I know. I know. So, <laughs> not much. He's got two years, well, I think. So, so looking at looking at Boyer's team in that matchup, though, uh, Zeke put up a touchdown. Eckler put up two. Uh, outside of that, there wasn't shit happening on Boyer's team either. So, thank God those couple guys scored. Otherwise, uh, yeah. he could have lost. Or it could have just been a 50-50 to matchup, and then that would have been fun too. Yeah, yep. that was the difference in our matchup is three skill position guys scored and or three touchdowns between his skill positions and – None between mine. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, realistically, I lost. I sat uh, George Pickin and uh, Dotson for Christian Kirk, which r- realistically is the right choice, I think. Yeah, but it, I support that um, decision. They, they Had I played either of them, I would have won. But, you know, to each their own. I done screwed up. Hopefully Christian Kirk uh, bounces back going into next year because he's been rough this year. So it is what it is. Um, yep. Let's jump uh, – Let's jump into my favorite segment, a segment that Mr. Mattoon wanted to join me in. And Andy will, you know, tell you what he's normally drinking. So, pow! Andy, tell me about your water. It's gone now. Oh, jeez, it's gone. Well, at least you're hydrated. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Mattoon, what are you drinking? You know, we got a little uh, cooler night by Arizona Standards. So, I got a little Woodford Reserves, uh, with a little splash of uh, ginger ale in there. So... Trying to keep warm here. He he must have been watching me drink the. He must have been watching us drink the on rocks the last couple of weeks, and he's yeah, saying, "Yeah, sure tuning in." I hit the uh, bells and whistles and the, the jingles and the jangles. Or so if you watch my that. if you watch my last podcast that finished you know 15 minutes ago, uh, I'm running the uh, Revolution Hip Hop Hero. It's a uh, hazy IPA, solid IPA, and then since that one's almost gone. We're going to jump into my old friend, Mr. Killian. So that's what I'm working on tonight. Neither one's are sponsors, so free sponsorship. Here we go. <laughs> Ready to pull up that bench guy anytime. So uh, let's uh, let's jump into week 17. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run down quick lineup decisions if we see any um, for the Kelly Burns for the for the Kelly Burns matchup, and then we will hit the third place game briefly, and then we will dive deeper into the championship matchup. So I will start us off uh, Kelly versus Burns. Uh, Kelly's starting still currently Russell Wilson, um, as he doesn't have another option other than Colt McCoy. So I believe that's going to be a startable person. Derrick Henry's doubtful. Moving ETN up, throwing Deontay Foreman in. Uh, any th- thought on uh, you got to start him? You're not starting Evan Ingram. Chris Olave, maybe if he's back. Um, over Jerry Judy, if he's out. Amari Cooper, Jerry, uh, Olave over Judy or Cooper. Go. Hmm. I'm looking at the matchup. These are quick. No, I'm I'll keeping it. Him. Keep keep Judy and Cooper. Yeah, going All against right. Philly, that's tough. All right, fair yeah. enough. Shooting shooting over to Burns' think, side. Yeah, go ahead. I think the biggest thing looking at Kelly is uh, not sure why, but Underhill dropped Gardner Minshew. And uh, if I'm Kelly, I'm probably making a run at that, right? Russ yeah. has not been good. We we talked about that in the last one. Uh, we both, uh, I believe, had Minshew over Russ. So, yeah. I would agree. Um, looking over at Burnsy's side. Um, I think you got to get start- Pollard in over Fournette if he's health if he's playing tomorrow he's night. Playing. You got to get Pollard in. Yeah, um, but he's probably got him on the bench just because that questionable tag 
You don't want to get caught with your pants down if you don't switch your lineup in time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would that or leave Fournette in and put Alan Lazard out for, for Pollard. Yeah, that's not bad. I w- I think I'd leave Fournette in against Carolina. Yeah. Fournette still put up decent pointage the last couple of weeks, even with Rashad White coming in. So I think I'd go that route, and I'd get Lazard out of my lineup. Yeah, that's fair. Lazard hasn't had a touchdown in like two months, so yeah, he hasn't done much. Lately. All right, who do you guys think is going to win this matchup, though? Burnsy, Burns, easy yep. Burns. I'm taking Burns as well. So, all right, uh, Mattoon. Take me, uh, take me into Andy's side of your matchup. Andy, take me into uh, Mattoon's side of your matchup in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to start with Andy's side and say uh, his guys are healthy. Um, his guys are good. Um, he's he's looking pretty solid. We know what Burrow can do. We'll see between Mixon and Sanders, solid running backs. Um, Singletary had a great game last week. We'll see if we can. Uh, continue that you know really I think the only thing maybe he's sitting there toying with is Mike Williams or uh I haven't seen exactly what Iuke's been doing or put the up eight points last week. Been... he what he put up eight points last week so I I mean I think that's the only thing Andy's probably splitting hairs between Iuke and the guy that he probably wishes he would have gotten to move at the trade deadline is Slayton you know those are really all guys that he could rotate in just pay depending on the matchup, but I mean, Mike Williams has got such big play potential in that Chargers offense if Herbert is capable. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm assuming Debo's out. I might actually lean Ayuk against Vegas over Devin Singletary against Cincinnati. I don't know if that's a, a favorable opinion, but I might I might lean that way just but but you also might be looking at the floor play of Singletary, hoping for you know eight points, exactly. Six points. So, Andy, any thoughts right off the top? I'm just hoping Mattoon's putting up fifty again this week, and then I'll be I'll be good. Um, um, you put up forty nine. <laughs> yeah, I I mean Singletary doesn't get to play the Bears this week, so you know he's not getting nineteen points. <laughs> I think uh, I think I'm leaving it how I've got it. Uh, Mike Williams has been good since he came back from the injury. Um, you know, Ayuk is a guy that I I wouldn't mind getting in there, but we'll see. We'll see if I get antsy on uh, on Sunday. But I think I'm leaving it as I got it. Yeah, uh, Singletary is probably the better floor play and probably what you're going to need. Yeah. All right, Andy, run me down Mattoon side real quick. All right. So we've got uh, Josh Allen countering my Joe Burrow in that Monday night game. So that'll be fun to watch. Um, mm-hmm. And then with Diggs there. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of movement in our, in our matchup, I think on Monday night, which will be fun. Uh, but looking at Mattoon's bench uh, for as long as I have always felt like Mattoon's bench could have been a starting lineup for a lot of teams in this league. No longer. I don't really see anything here. Um, I mean, the closest thing would be people's Jones over Burks. Um, but I kind of like Traylon. So Ty, you see anything else you want to. Nah, I'd leave, I'd leave Traylon in hope for the upside. Uh, the only downfall is Tannehill's not there. Malik, Malik Willis has been rough. Yeah. But... yeah. I think you you give it a shot if you're gonna do it. I, not that I think it, there's not really an injury injury risk right now. Sure. But I think I move Burks up and move Pittman down to my flex or Diggs down to my flex since he's Monday night, just in case something goes haywire. You have some flexibility, but I don't see it being a problem. Um, just small lineup tweaks. So yeah. So, but no, I I would leave People Jones on the bench against Washington. They've been pretty solid. Yeah. So I'm I'm leaving it as is. So uh who do you guys like to win this matchup? I'm gonna go Andy. I, I mean my team just guys are putting up yards but just not getting in the end zone. So I mean you hope that one of them I mean this is four weeks in a row where I've had less than one guy score a week. 
you know, so got to hope guys fall into the end zone, but right now it's just not happening. So I'm rolling Andy, you know, he's been putting up points. Andy. Um, I gotta say, I'm not a fan of pretty much any of the matchups that my guys have this week. We're looking at a lot of, a lot of my team playing Buffalo. Miles Sanders gets the saints Adams against San Fran Tyreek against the Patriots. Like not a lot of things I'm excited about, but um, Mattoon's team's banged up, not having Taylor, not having Cup. Definitely, I mean, those those are t- top draft picks this year. So, uh, definitely gives me a leg up there. I think I definitely have the advantage at tight end because I get to play a, a quarterback at tight end, and you don't. So, yeah, you know, you could go find Jeff Driscoll. I'll, I was going to say at this point, though, I the the Browns might need to look at Njoku as a as a quarterback because Watson's not doing much no he is not uh so I'm gonna <laughs> go me but I do think this one's going under projections for probably both of us it's gonna be another another dud it's a good thing that we aren't playing each other in the championship like yeah. we thought we might be because we'd be <laughs> disappointing a lot of people well well Andy just look at our projected points for right now all season long we both have been sitting at the high 90s low hundreds <laughs> and points projected and we're definitely in the high 80s right now so that yep. tells you everything you need to know right now sleeper knows yeah <laughs> i think they're over projecting you still they might be I think they, I think they might be i i i think i think i'm taking andy here uh my big fear is Pittman evans najoku burks that bottom half of Mateen's yeah. lineup mm-hmm. definitely doesn't make me feel comfortable evans playing carolina maybe that's nice for, for a little bit of a bounce back but uh carolina's playing for playoffs still so yeah that division I, I don't know grabs. i don't i don't like it but i'm gonna take andy not that I don't like it because I don't care who wins your matchup because I didn't make it, but I just don't like the bottom half of your lineup, Mattoon. So let's go to the uh, unexpected championship. Uh, Jer Fry versus Boyer. Uh, I'm going to run down Boyer's side. If you got one of you wants to jump down Jeremy's side next. So Boyer has Justin Herbert. Versus the Rams. He's got Zeke versus Tennessee. Eckler versus the Rams. Chris Godwin against Carolina. A.J. Brown against New Orleans. Metcalf against the Jets. Andrews against Pittsburgh. Najee Harris in the flex against Baltimore. Um, are, are you guys... Herbert gets the Rams, so we're probably keeping Herbert in this week, right? Over Dak? Dak has Tennessee. Tennessee's run defense is good. Their pass defense isn't their great. Their pass defense isn't. Their pass defense is terrible. Pace of play in Titans games is, is rough. Yep. Rams yep. defense is bad, too. Yeah. They don't get to play Russell Wilson every week. Yeah. So. I just, I think right now, if I'm Boyer, I don't know that I can trust the quarterback and the running back for the Chargers right now. If there's an offense, if there's a situation where I'm playing both sides of it, I feel like I got to go Dallas just based on points they're putting up. I don't know. And with Pollard being questionable, Zeke should get his touches. We know that's Tennessee a good stuff. point. You know, if uh, if Pollard doesn't play, Zeke gets a big boost here. It doesn't. It's irrelevant to the quarterback conversation, yeah. but. Uh, that could be huge for Boyer this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just he's hard got, to start a guy after five points. That yeah. it is. So Najee's been getting volume. I think you keep Najee in. Ackler and, and Elliott are in. I Because he's got Jamal Williams. He's got Zach Moss on the bench, which are both solid options. But you're not starting them. Mm-mm. Um, Gabe Davis is really the only option on the bench at wide receiver I'm even considering here, but you can't start him over AJ Brown or Metcalf. Uh, Chris Godwin, I don't think you can start him over Godwin either. He's had a couple good games. His low's been five points the last handful of weeks. You're probably just keeping Godwin in, right? Yeah. I think you're just rolling with the lineup that got you there at this point. Yep. yep. Don't try and get cute. Okay. 
fair enough all right so with that uh that's about all i got um good luck making that quarterback decision boyer other than that your team's looking all right uh one of you guys want to take me over to jerry fry go ahead Matun. you don't get to do this every week oh man i'm i'm blessed so jerry fry's team is in my opinion definitely outperformed what's what's on paper here but um he's got kirk cousins at the helm uh, two running backs are Dalvin Cook and Kamara. Wide receivers, he's rolling with Hodgins, Juju, and Hollywood Brown. Hawkinson in the flex and Mostert in uh, – or sorry, Hawkinson in tight end, Mostert in the flex. I think really his only other options that I'm seeing is he's got uh, the Jeff Wilson. Um, so which, which Miami running back is he taking? Debo um, is down there questionable, and Tyler Lockett's questionable. So. It sounds like Lockett's gonna play. It also sounds like Debo had a possibility of playing. Yep. So both of those are definitely worth monitoring because if either of those are playing, you're playing him over Hodgins, I'd imagine. Unless Jeremy or says well, he may, he got me here, so we're leaving him in. <laughs> yeah. Or at this point, you got uh, Trace McSorley running running the calls in uh, in Arizona. Do you trust Hollywood and Hop and Colt, Colt my boy? Colt my boy is supposed to be he coming back. back. Is he coming back? Oh boy, supposed to be. Oh boy, can't yeah, be worse than Trace. <laughs> can't be worse than yeah. Trace though. Yeah. Um. So, so. Uh, to me, Hodgins has been hot. If you don't get both of those guys back, he might be the guy you leave. I just, if it's me, I'm not trusting Hollywood right now. I'm not trusting any of those outside of Hop, who only had what one catch last game. Yeah, but he had like ten targets. Yeah. So, to me, Hollywood's the first guy to go in that lineup. But that's, I'm an outsider. Yeah, they they get I have a strong opinion. They get Atlanta though, which is the only benefit. Hodgins gets Indiana, which is Indianapolis, which is at least a solid yeah. defense, slower pace of play. We talked about this earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I think I think you've got to take Hodgins out. I know that he's been hot, but can you really play him again? Yeah. He's he's played good three out of four weeks the last couple, but I don't know. Um with that, I would definitely – I think I'm leaning Jeff Wilson over uh, Moster. Yeah, Agreed. I would make that switch. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, it's really just waiting to see what this what this wide receiver situation looks like come, come Sunday. Yeah. They'll uh, they'll have a bit of a, an eye of what Boyer's team can do because Zeke plays tomorrow. So if Zeke has a big game – and they're looking at an even bigger hole than they're already looking at in this projection, then you might want to start picking your guys based on who you think you can swing for the fences with. Yep. And in my eyes, that's probably Hollywood and 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 uh, Debo if he's healthy. If not Debo, lock it if he's healthy. Wow. But I don't know. Yeah, you got to hope Hollywood gets one of those breaks one for sixty or something. Yep. Only takes one with that's, that guy, so yep. that's Jeremy's. Uh, that's Jerry Fry's team plan every week, anyway. Just hope one of these guys breaks one and gets seventy points to win a matchup, or twenty three from Hawkinson. Yeah, I'm still pissed about Hawkinson because I didn't know he was available, and I'd have paid. I'd have paid for him because I needed a tight end to round this team out. Don't don't you have the guy that put up like fifty as your tight end? He only did that <laughs> once. <laughs> So, all right, with that, uh, who's going to win this matchup? Boyer. Boyer. Sorry, Jer Fry. Uh, Fryer, I know I talked to you last night. I hope you guys win because I'd love to see the underdog story continue. And I don't care if my pick's 11 or 12 at this point. But if I have to pick, it's got to be Boyer. I will say, I think Jer Fry's got the advantage at quarterback and tight end. Yep. Uh, so if the rest of their guys can just keep up, uh, that, that's their window. Yeah. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's just a good matchup. That's all I'm asking. I, I'd like to see these guys sweat it out a little bit. Um, 
and see what happens. So I hate I hate that I'm not there. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not in a matchup this week. It's fine. You wouldn't um, have been there even if Dalvin, you made playoffs. I gotta imagine Dalvin gets quite a bit of touches at Green Bay this time of year. Yeah. Hopefully that's a, a shootout and that'll help Jerry Fry yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, I we'll see. We'll see what happens, but Boyer's the clear favorite at this point, I I wouldn't mm-hmm. think. Agreed. Except for last week when he shit the bed. So just don't do that again. You'll be all right. <laughs> Trans- don't start Herbert is what you're saying, right? It's fantasy football, <laughs> and we've seen some weird things happen this year. So I I'm here I am cheering for Jer Fry. Uh sorry, Boyer. I, I don't mean not to cheer for you, but what the hell? Let's get this underdog story running. And uh See what happens. So, anything else from you guys last minute here? Nothing. When when do trade days open? Uh, as soon as the playoffs are over. Tuesday, Tuesday the fourth, Tuesday the third, whatever that day is. All right. Tuesday. Sweet. Can't wait. So, on that, enjoy championship weekend. Um, hopefully some good shit's happening to you. You got things going on, but I don't really give a shit. So here we are. We'll catch you guys in the off season. We're out.